Businesses thrive by knowing customer insights because today's insights are tomorrow's facts. At iResearch, we live and breathe insights. And despite searching high and low, we were unable to find a customer insights podcast that answers one of the most important questions in business. Why do customers do what they do? So we launched one. Hi, I'm your host, Darshan Mehta. On this episode, I'd like to talk with Nikhil Jain. He is the co-founder and chief marketing officer at Milowee. Milowee is redefining online delivery, bringing fresh, tasty home, home, homemade food to your doorstep. They empower talented home chefs to serve food that not only nourishes the body, but also feeds the soul. Welcome, Nikhil. How are you? Thank you so much, Darshan, for inviting me over here. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. You know, I want to start off with a quote that you often uh, like, and that is, the goal is to die with memories, not dreams. Tell me why you like that quote. Uh, yeah, so uh, that quote has been with me from my, you know, like college days itself, you know, because uh, whenever I used to see people, you know, people used to think very small and people used to not talk about their dreams. And they used to be like, you know, with a very rigid mindset of being thinking small and doing things. I was very clear at that point of time that I want to do something and I want to not just dream it. I want to make it happen. I want to die with memories, not just dreams. So, you know, when I heard this statement for the first time, I was like, oh man, this is my, you know, this is the thing which I want. And that's how it has been stuck with me from last five, six years. And I've been following that uh, from a long time. So I'm curious, what other aha moments have you had in your personal life? that have put you on this path to appreciate this quote as well as what are you doing to, I guess, make this quote be a reality for you? Oh, nice. Uh, interesting question. Uh, so some of the dreams which I've made into a reality. Uh, so I'll answer this question in two parts. One is personal life and second is professional life. So in personal life, one of the biggest dreams which I've done is, you know, I celebrated my mom and dad's 25th anniversary. You know, I did the whole budgeting i called whole family and you know, i made a big arrangement for them i made a surprise party for them and they were truly happy you know i did, did that just at the age of 21 and it was a you know a dream coming true and coming at the professional part i always dreamt of being an entrepreneur you know being in startup being in you know making a change in the society bringing a change in the society working on problems you know uh, which really needs to be solved and that's how I'm doing. And, you know, I've been currently working with uh, multiple startups till now. And right now at Milavi, we are solving this problem and we have uh, gained a lot of a lot of traction and people are loving it. And we are proud of that, what we have built and looking forward to make it a bigger success now. So what are the things that really got you into, interested in entrepreneurship? And maybe you can tell me, what are three key lessons you've learned so far as you've been involved with being an entrepreneur? Okay. So the entrepreneurship journey was a tricky journey for me, to be honest, because uh, at the start itself, I got some setbacks. Uh, so the first lesson which I learned is never trust anyone. You should be prepared. You know, you, should, you just can't trust people. Uh, so you should be prepared legally. You should have proper... Uh, agreements lined up with you. So first, don't trust anyone directly. Don't trust anyone blindly. Second, keep everything documented. So, you know, once you keep the things documented, you have a very clear plan and clear vision of what you want and how you're going to achieve it. Otherwise, there's only a lot of bubbles going in your head and you don't have the clarity, right? And the third most important is consistency and passion, you know. That is the key. If you... I'm not consistent. If you're not passionate enough to solve that problem or do something, you won't achieve the success, you know, though you will regret your life otherwise. So yeah, these are the three main lessons, which I think. I think the first one you mentioned is quite interesting because I think you're drawing the distinction when you say don't trust anybody, but I think what you're really saying is friends are one thing, business is another uh, thing. And you really need to get things in writing, anticipate all the options of not doing well, not only doing well, but perhaps doing not so well and what are the exits and everything. And I think when you say don't trust him, I'm going to modify a little bit. 
you can trust, but you definitely have to verify and confirm because ultimately you are going to end up trusting your employees, right? To deliver your products. Yeah, yeah of course. So right. Don't trust blindly. If you, you can, you should trust people, you know, business works on trust. Uh, but you know, don't trust blindly, you know, at the start itself, you know, once there's a proof of concept, you know, let's approve, you know, that you can rely on that person or that person is good because initially at the start, if you don't know that person, you cannot judge that person. What's the true personality is or the true colors of that person. So I'm just like, don't trust anyone blindly. Of course, business runs on trust and we have to trust our employees. We have to trust our co-founders. We have to trust, you know, how everything goes. Uh, yeah, that's it. So you said you love to decode things. I'm curious, what led you to have a love for decoding? And when you talk about decoding, are you talking about business, technology, research? Tell me a little bit more about why you love decoding and how you got uh, a passion for decoding. Yeah. Uh, so I'll tell you, like being a Jain person, you know, being coming into from Marwadi family, the Banya. So, you know, from childhood, we have been taught, you know, about business terms and we, you know, play with numbers and finance. So, I, I was a bright student uh, from my school days. I was a topper in my school, like gra- crack J advanced and means also. And uh, now I'm a computer engineer by profession. But during this whole journey, you know, there were small, small things which used to make me curious, you know. You know, how this brands work, how this brands, you know, work on user psychology, you know. They'll save tons of money, you know, just by doing a small change and you will not ever even recognize it. You know, there are a lot of case studies which come up. It's, for example, uh, in FMCG industry, what those companies does is they just change the packaging size with little bit of variation and they save tons of money. Right? So how they do it, what happens in the business, what are the business models which you know through which you can come up and you know change the revolution, bring the revolution. So all these things when you decode those stuff, when you research, it gives a kick to me, you know. Uh, that, you know, this is totally new thing or this is the thing which and to implement it in my real life also with the startups I'm working on with my own startup. So uh, decoding is really cool thing, I, I would say, uh, because you decode not just at the uh, bottom level, but at the top level also, or at the grassroots level also at the, you know, how exactly the person is thinking and what strategy they are using. So, yeah, that's it. You mentioned curiosity. I'm curious, how important would you say curiosity is? And perhaps you can give me an example of curiosity and how it really bene- benefited you in, in an example. Okay, uh, very nice question. Uh, so curiosity, so what happens when you're choosing a career, you know? You're totally confused. You don't know which career to choose. And that's where curiosity takes a big play. Uh, so for example, in my life, you know, when I started my entrepreneurship journey, I was totally in the path that which uh, career path should I choose, uh, you know, which domain I should enter into ed tech or food tech or, you know, what things, you know, so the curiosity of learning those domains, understanding and, you know, having a passion to learn about them, that helped a lot. So, and that's how we enter into food tech industry. Before this, uh, I was also working in ed tech, a social community platform. and the, you know, the dynamics, how this industry works, how this domain works, the curiosity about them, you know, for example, how Zomato is making loss being, after being such a big company. Why Swiggy is making losses after being such a big company, right? So all these questions and all this curiosity, you know, brings, uh, changes your perspective about a new industry, gives you a new perspective. And that's how we learned about this and we launched Milavi and we are going good in that sense. So tell me about the inspiration of uh, what led you to start Malawi. And also, if you can explain to us, what exactly is Malawi? Yeah, so I'll go with the second question first. So Malawi, Malawi is actually a food marketplace, a platform. We have an application launched on Play Store and App Store. And we have already crossed 25,000 organic users in just last few months. And so now, whenever you order food from any other food marketplace or app, you know, the, the, leave, the food is delivered from nearby cloud kitchen or restaurant. But again, what happens is that the food is not much healthy. You know, the curry is, you know, being preserved over there. It's packaging, it's plastic and all those stuff. Right. So what we did is we wanted homemade food, home cooks to you know, empower them. 
So through Milavi, when you order food, you get food from home cooks, home chefs. So you can order homemade food at your doorstep, and with an eco-friendly packaging. So our USP is fresh, healthy, homemade food. It's pocket-friendly. It's thirty percent cheaper than other platforms, and it's eco-friendly. And also, you empower women. You know, our vision is healthy India and empower women. We want to make sure that every individual of India, you know, uh, you know, have healthy homemade food. And you know, at the same time, this creates an opportunity, is an employment for the uh, housewives also. So in 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 India, uh, like I guess you would, uh, many of the people don't know that sixty nine percent of women are not financially independent. Sixty nine percent. So this is a big figure in India, and that's why we are, you know, so all those women are trying. We are trying to empower them through this platform and working at their home and. Doing thing which they love, cooking food. Right, so that that's how we are doing, and that's what Milave is, and how we started. So, yeah, homemade food has always been a pain point for us. Uh, we uh, so we are three co-founders. So our you know our founder you know he is a food lover, and even so he had traveled to multiple places all over the India and internationally also US everywhere. And everywhere at the end, you know, there used to be the same problem. He used to miss homemade food because if you have outside food, also one day, two day, three day is fine. Fourth day you will become ill. Your stomach will be upset, right? So uh, you know there was a craving for homemade food, which was you know uh, going on, going on, and increasing day by day, day by day. And that's how we realized this is a big market, and from now. As the generation is being more health conscious, this is the right time to start, right? Because and creating an opportunities for them. So that's how we thought about this. We came together and we started Milavi. So two questions: How did you get to twenty five thousand users in what two months? But also, how do you ensure and maintain quality of the food? Very nice. Uh, so first, I'll go again. Go with the second question first. So, what we do is when we onboard the kitchens, it's a tedious, it's a long process, right? So whenever we get the lead of the kitchen, you know, our operations manager calls them, explains them thing, and then we have eleven parameters, eleven checklist, right? So we check the locality, we check the background, we do the background verification, we see you know if the uh, kitchen is clean or not, hygiene check, food tasting check, our representative goes over there. Taste the food, checks the you know hygiene part, the raw materials and everything, right? And once that is done, the kitchen, if the kitchen is having facade license, is fine. Else, we apply facade license for them, food security license, food security and safety license, so that all the kitchens on Milavi, we have three fifty family kitchens, home cooks with us as of now in just one city. We are serving almost one hundred and twenty pen codes in India. Right, so in this cluster itself, uh, you know, we have three fifty plus kitchens, and all the kitchens are facade licensed kitchens, and everyone's are doing good business with us. And uh, we have very so many inspiring stories of different women from rich class to middle class to upper middle class to lower middle class. Uh, you know, someone is passionate about the food making, create making food. Someone is doing it for the her livelihood to you know uh, feed their children to be independent. So there are different stories, and you know, we I feel very good and I uh, feel honored you know when I listen the stories and feel that you know Milavi is creating an impact in their lives. Hmm. Interesting. How do you maintain brand identity when you have basically independent kitchens all out there? How do you ensure that you're actually still building your brand and people can associate? Because I'm sure at some point you may have competitors if you don't. How are you going to maintain brand equity as well as build it? Okay, sure. So uh, as Milavi, you know, we are very, as I said, we are very clear with the vision that we want to empower women, right? We want to build and we want to have healthy India and help provide homemade food. So whenever we onboard these kitchens. We are a company who is not user centric first, who is vendor centric first, home cook centric first. So we do all those things with the mind of keeping that home cooks are being empowered and home cooks are being incentivized. So the all these kitchens are 
working or cooking food at their home, right? So they don't have any physical outlet. So how whatever they promote is through our application itself. So our brand goes everywhere if they promote or we promote. Second, if any competitor also comes in. So we make, as I said, we are very home home cook centric brand. So we make sure that our uh, cooks are loyal to us. We create loyalty programs for them. We have different incentive plans for them. And we have engage, engagement and training programs also for them. And we also are starting some financial assistance program for all the home cooks so that even they can get some assistance to us. So, yeah, so if the home cooks are loyal to us and, you know, being associated with Malawi brand and they love the brand, you know, they won't go to anywhere and all the users will stick to Malawi and we'll have a brand identity in that sense. So how did you get to 25,000 users in two months? Okay. So, uh, like we did some growth hacking. I did some growth hacking strategy. So we did a launch event on 16th of October. Right? So 16th of October is celebrated as World Food Day. And this year's, last year's 2022 theme uh, for the World Food Day was Don't Leave Behind. Right? So we also created one festival, you know. We thought, you know, let's do something on World Food Day. So, and as a launch event, we named it as Malawi Food Festival. And it was the online food festival where we were giving free food worth rupees 16 lakh rupees on 16th of October. If you don't mind, convert 16 lakh into dollars for the rest of the audience that might not know how much that means. So it means almost $2,000. Uh, okay, just hold on. Sorry, twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. So twenty thousand dollars worth free food, which we were giving, you know, to the in the Pune city, right? So because we came up with that number because that was resembling with the date on the World Food Day on sixteenth of October, we were providing free food worth over sixteen of lakh, and we managed this uh, to pull off this whole event in just ten days. We got sponsors. We got sponsors from the city, you know, we uh, we almost uh, put 10 hoardings, big, big hoardings all over the city, radio ads, influencer marketing, and it was going viral. Everyone was talking about Milavi through just one thing. And the best part is we, yeah, we didn't, you know, uh, like, it was not a loss for us because <laughs> everything was sponsored. Right, so the food was being sponsored, the marketing expense was being sponsored. So we planned this whole event in such a way that everything gets sponsored, and we get the traction. Also, the brands get the traction, right? So and also as it was World Food Day, so we also partnered with some NGO, right? Because uh, to donate food to you know watchmen, to maids, and all those people, so that uh, we were throwing, a, we were giving a message that Jude. Uh, have homemade food, taste your homemade food, but don't just, you don't have, give it to the, your maids and your watchmen also, right? So that's how we promoted it. And it went viral in just one week. Uh, we got almost on Instagram, we got 10 lakh views, more than 10 lakh views. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we got signups, like almost 20, 25,000 signups in just one month or one and a half month in that span. What stage are you at now with Malawi? So right now, uh, we are at the growth stage. We are the early revenue stage. We are doing good. We have all, we have a good traction on monthly orders as well as we are doing B2B orders as also. So we are serving to the corporates also. And uh, so right now we are raising funds uh, on at the seed level. And soon we'll be raising a VC round. Interesting. And tell me your vision. Where do you want to go uh, next? And where do you, what would you like to be five years from now? So for Milavi, we feel that Milavi can be a big brand. And we always tell that Milavi is a brand of moms. Milavi is a brand of food for everyone to resonate with. So in the next five years, Milavi is going to change the food industry. It's going to, because as home cook industry, home chef industry is unorganized market. It's not organized. Right? There is no proper system in place, not proper ecosystem for it. And we are creating an into an ecosystem for it. So we are going to bring a big, big revolution in it and make home cook industry, home chef industry coming at the top at the level of restaurants in the 
क्लाउड किचन इंडस्ट्री yeah so it will be a billion billion dollar business for sure and so um how many women are now cooking or how many cooks do you have or how many kitchens uh as i said we have 350 plus family kitchens 350 plus home cooks with us and we also have around uh, 350 or 400 leads with us which will be onboarding by this month and will be uh, in next one month so by next month then we'll be having around 600 to 700 home cooks in just one city and we are expanding to other cities also hmm. and so how difficult has it been for you to build a team to support what you're doing at Malawi yeah it was pretty difficult to be honest because uh, as i said the system this whole market is unorganized there is uh, because when you enter into an organized market there is a set of steps already done someone has done it so you know what have what needs to be done how it needs to be done right but as this industry was new and it's unorganized market there was no certain proper steps you know how you should go ahead you know how you should talk to them because even those home cooks or women or moms are they don't know much about this right so we have to aware them about this we have to make a proper sops proper systems for this so initially the whole process was a little bit difficult but slowly slowly we have optimized it very well and uh, we have built a whole team you know to support us with the same process So you started, I believe, in uh, the fall of 2022, correct? Yeah, the uh, we launched our application, uh, final version of the application, in October 2022, and we started working on it bef- one year before that. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And so, tell me, what are some of the ups and downs you've had, and how did you overcome them? Okay, so uh, there were a lot of ups and downs, and business you. always feel like you know because as you working you know so um, you feel that like you have achieved one target and suddenly the target just vanishes you know so and then again it comes and it vanishes so there has been some time that you know we we thought that we have just cracked this thing and it goes away and then we put again more efforts we wait for more one two days and it again goes away so uh, you know that part that one week you know that 10 days you know were a lot difficult or a very exciting you can say first because we learned a lot we understood you know that how things work so the so kitchens onboarding you know to make aware all those home chefs you know how you should work and how uh, make things was a little bit uh, hard at the start but then as i said you know we have built a system for it we have built a proper recipes and proper training programs so now this has been streamlined and it's going very smooth uh, the other part which also comes is delivery you know delivery is a big issue uh, because in rainy season majorly because if it's raining you know the delivery boys are stuck somewhere the food gets cold or the packaging might get uh, you know just uh, spoiled so uh, rainy season delivery is a little bit challenge for all food delivery partners uh, all all around the globe especially in india so even that's a challenge but uh, as i said we have built a special packaging so what we have done is we don't serve food in plastic we have created special paper packaging containers uh, branded with milavi branding proper and those containers are microwaveable so if the food is cold right you, know, you can just put it in microwave and make it hot right so we serve all our food materials goes into those paper containers food items and you know whenever a person is having it you know whenever he receives receive it he enjoys it because it's a new totally new feeling the packaging is not spoiled the packaging is well very very well maintained its paper containers not plastic because again hot food reaction with plastic is carcinogenic in nature it causes cancer the the reaction between whenever you put something hot a steam you know a steam reaction with the plastic or the foils which you use in the you know market you know that is cancerogenic it causes cancer you know so we were very clear at the start that we wouldn't want to do that so we avoided that and we came up with this packaging solution and that's how we have been going mm. so i'm curious if you were to talk to a younger uh, nikhil jain let's say maybe a uh, a five years younger what advice would you give that nikhil jain based on what you've learned now i would say to him 
don't run for perfection just start and make it better every day anything else yeah but this is the major thing and also i would you know say him that you know just go with the flow you know just keep that dreams in the mind and you will achieve it because the ladder of success is defined for you you just have to walk towards it and have you learned some ways to listen to or observe clues that help you guide you in this uh, path you're talking about that you have um so you you are saying that you're talking about I, this ladder this ladder right this ladder that you is there and you stick on yeah. stick on the path have you cuz i think sometimes people say you should go this direction but i think what you're saying you kind of see what's going on but you also have an intuitive sense of which way you should be going and i'm trying to understand it. How have you learned to balance that? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a total challenge, you know. But uh, once you you have to believe, uh, you have to go with your gut, you know. So there's always a feeling, you know. Uh, some decisions might be easy or might be more lucrative or incentivizing for you at the start, but those decisions are not that good at the end, you know. But there are some other decisions, you know. Uh, who might not be that good at the start but are very much fruitful at the end you know that that's how entrepreneurship journey goes so uh you have i believe that you have to go with the gut you have to you know analyze everything proper pros and cons and see what do you want uh, after 5 years how do you see yourself you know i always ask myself that you know how i see myself after 5 years that i should not able i should not be regretting my decision you know that अगर मैंने ये किया होता आई विश आई कुड हैव डन दिस थिंग यू नो एट दी स्टार्ट ऑफ फाइव इयर्स बिफोर सो आई डोंट वांट टू डू दैट सो आई जस्ट गो विद द गट एंड आई डोंट वांट टू ब्लेम एनीवन एल्स इट हैज टू बी माय डिसीजन इट हैज टू बी मी एंड दैट्स हाउ आई गो इट यू आल्सो फाउंडेड अनदर कंपनी कॉल्ड वाइब्रेंसी टेल मी व्हाट दैट वाज एंड हाउ डिड दैट हेल्प यू ऑन दिस पाथ टू स्टार्ट मलावी so uh, so vibrancy uh, was a social media community application which we were building you know so there was a lot of uh, boom around social media but again what happens is at the end you end doom scrolling it there's a lot of time wasted in the social media they just uh, you know it's not much productive and when i used to see myself or other youth i i was able to control myself and you know not just my waste my time on social media but you know a lot of people in india you know and especially youth uh, could do so much things could learn so many things and do something different right create an impact in society uh, learn about the passion or join a community uh, you know of the passion but they're not able to because they're just stuck in that doom scrolling they are not able to find the right pe- persons whom they can vibe with so the idea behind vibrancy was to build a passion communities communities around every passion and not not multiple communities but just about around one passion only one main community where everyone comes around and you can use filters and you can have content you can connect with people offers everything at one place so that you know you follow your passion you learn you try to scale and you know that's how one of my passion was startup and business and as you said at the start you know i love decoding things uh, you know love decoding businesses and how those things work and curiosity so that was one of my passion and i know a lot of people have that but they're not able to explore that so that's how we had started vibrancy and there were a lot of lessons which we learned from there and then we started malawi so i'm curious where do you see your industry going in the next Five years. What, what do you see as the future in terms of the opportunities, and even maybe some of the threats to home cooked meals that are being delivered but done independently uh, by women who primarily stay at home? So, the food industry is huge in India. Uh, as per the current market, you know, as per twenty twenty two, the food delivery, online food delivery in India is eight billion dollar. It's huge, and it is growing at. 28.94 CAGR current annual growth rate so by 2026 it will reach around you know uh, 30 or 40 billion dollars so it's a huge industry and there's a huge potential in the market 
so this home cook industry uh so we believe that home cook industry is going to create its own market share in the online food delivery because at the end people want this you know people because people are getting busy in their daily lifestyle people are away from their home they are not able to cook and they cannot have every day outside food right so the uh, home cook for instance is going to flourish like anything for sure but yeah but there are competitors there are threats uh, there are a lot of other competitors also which are going on which are very big big players in the market like zomato and swiggy you know they are big players but they are again into cloud kitchens and restaurants so in online food delivery versions little affects because they have cash reserves huge cash reserves so they can again give high discounting they can play with something so there is some uh, competitive with competition in the space but we say that we are not here to compete with them we are here to coexist with them because homemade food delivery is going to create its own space and milavi is going to create its own space and own brand interesting yeah if you could have a meal to have a discussion with anyone in your industry who would it be and why okay so in in my industry in food tech industry or general let's let's do both we'll do food tech first and then general okay, okay. so uh, in food tech industry i would like to go with you know uh, the founder founders of rebel foods uh, they started with one small brand you know of cloud kitchen and they have established 15 plus brands all over india with a big presence you know so to creating starting a own small cloud kitchen and to creating multiple 15 brands and scaling it up is really commendable so i would like to you know definitely have a meal with them so one meal can be home cooked meal of milavi and one meal can be of course uh, again uh, their meals their, their brands meals and we would definitely discuss about various opportunities in food market and how it's going and uh, in general uh, i would like to meet with uh, dhirubhai ambani uh, mukesh ambani in specific basically his son who is handling the reliance industry and jew, jew industries so in india or all over the world reliance and jew has disrupting the ecosystem in its own special unique way with that we is unique they are, you know they uh, i i do research a lot about them and i decode a lot of stuff so i know one thing special is reliance and jio specially do a lot of cost cutting you know because they do everything on such a large scale they make sure that they optimize it by 0.01% also each and every process you know so how they handle such big industries how they create, you know bring a disruption in the ecosystem you know that's really commendable and would love to you know meet with meet him and learn from all the spaces So I'm curious, how do you maintain a consistent experience for the user when you're having independent cooks and kitchens and different dishes? How do you maintain a unified experience for the user? So, uh, food uh, specifically has its own taste. Every user has its own taste, right? So once a user uh, chooses his kitchen, right? He what he tries to do is he orders in the start he orders you know food from different different kitchens right but once you know after few days he chooses the ta- he chooses the taste at what taste he wants to eat you know like because everyone it's normal right you know i use the human psychology that we have 10 restaurants around us but we go to only two restaurants always around us you know because we trust them you know there's a we like that taste right so again food taste matters so for example what we have done is uh, we have divided family kitchens into different cuisines so because every family every region uh, regionals have different taste different taste notes for example maharashtrian ke will have a different taste notes gujarati will have a different taste notes uh, rajasthani will have a different taste notes so we have mentioned that you know this family this home cook is comes from which background and what is his or her taste notes right so once a user 
chooses because as a user i might want to eat in punjabi or my wife might want to eat gujarati so he chooses the kitchens accordingly and he orders from there frequently again and again so once the taste is established so he orders from there and enjoys the home cooked food and about the quality part we make sure that we have a proper sops aligned with the kitchens also for the packaging and the quality so that everything is again streamlined hmm. okay. yeah well i want to thank you nikhil for this uh, conversation i've enjoyed it i've learned a lot about uh, Me too. delivering from a home and uh, again thank you very much i look forward to continuing conversation uh, another time as well and seeing where you have uh, taken malawi uh into the next uh, sure. stages and you know in fulfilling your vision thank you so much darshan for inviting me would love to have conversations in future and it was definitely a very nice conversation i had some moments in the conversation that was i was like ha ah, this is like aha moment for me <laughs> uh, this is something which uh that happened with me and i'm realizing it now so yeah it was a very nice conversation thank you so much thanks again talk to you later take care Getting to AHA was brought to you by iResearch. To find out more about us, head to iResearch.com. And make sure to search for Getting to AHA in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are found. And don't forget to click follow to ensure you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you for listening.